While waiting for our new Leopard 45 catamaran in France, we take Mini Dash out on her last sail as we prepare to sell her. In this episode, we review the McGregor 26 having lived aboard. So, find out what we really think about this boat. Uh, we, are, we are in Kuji Mudlow Island, which is just in the more south end of the Moreton Bay, and we are beached as. We got washed up on the beach last night in a squall, and the, of course the wind always comes from the absolutely the wrong direction if it's going to happen, and at high tide we got uh, bounced up the beach onto well, the top of the tide and then the tide went out and left us beached as is is beached beached is. Is, is in new zealand as we say <laughs> fortunately tonight's a higher tide so we're waiting to see if we float off today because the high tide in the earlier today wasn't high enough at all it didn't even get to the front of our boat because the morning tides were much lower than the evening tide so we have a bit bigger tide tonight than it was yesterday so we are expecting to float off and we are living in hope. So any minute now. So here we are. At Look at that wonderful Maji, life. Kuchi Mudlo. In a beautiful little bay. Across there is Brisbane. Mainland. Ma mainland. And it's picture perfect. Apart from the fact that we're beaches. <laughs> Touching the anchor rope to the only winches on the boat that we have which are little fairly pathetic winches and see if oh here we go Oh, we're just taking a, going for a little day sail around Moulton Bay with the baby. You want to be on camera? Hey, yeah. You want to drive the boat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, day sail, taking it easy. A little bit of wind, not a lot, but nice and comfy. So, having a great time. This is actually your last sail. The last sail. Dan. So Dan, you're going to say hello to everybody on YouTube? <laughs> Man a few words. Okay, so we were in the process of trying to make plans of what to do going forward and, and obviously we wanted to get to the boat shop because we wanted to see boats and see what was out there and what opportunities we could get. Mm -hmm. In order to get there we had to move really fast. We had to get Mini Dash, the McGregor 26 up for sale and and we basically only left ourselves about 10 days didn't we? We did. So how did you feel about selling the boat? Well, it was bittersweet because while we had Mini Dash it was a means to getting out on the water and enjoying the beautiful weather and everything while we didn't have our big boat. Yes, yeah, so it was, I mean, it, it really f suited us very well. Interestingly, we put the boat up for sale on online uh, because that was going to be the fastest way for us to do it. 
and within three days we had about five people interested and and three of them were really serious one person actually said look I'm four hours away from you but I want to get the boat I'm not going to argue with the price at all so if you can guarantee that you won't sell it to these other people that I said had already called then I'll agree to your your price that you've asked without any question he'd been looking for a McGregor for a while so yeah. when he saw this one he said I know the McGregor's I want it if it checks out to be everything they say I'll take it yeah so we said to him um, that yeah that's fine we'll guarantee you you come down and he was going to come down on the Monday this was the Friday and in the meantime we had these other four people saying they wanted to come and view the boat on Saturday and Sunday so we gave him our word that we would sell it to him as long as he would come down on Monday check the boat out and go ahead with the price of the boat at the full asking price which was fantastic for us so we waited till Monday but in the meantime one of the guys I oh know we phoned him back and said look I'm sorry um, the boats already sold and and the guys agreed to the price um, and he said well I'll pay you $5,000 more I said look I'm sorry it's, I've already agreed and he said well have you got a contract has he signed the contract has he paid a deposit I said no no but I've given my word I said I'll hold it for him till Monday um, because he's agreed to buy it. He thought we're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, and I mean, this guy also had several more texts, several more calls, mm -hmm. questioning more and more, like, why didn't we go ahead and, and agree to an extra five thousand dollars? On the Saturdays, another per, one, another one of the buyers also, um, when we said it's not available, they offered us another five thousand dollars more as well. So really, we should have been having an auction. Should <laughs> we should have. <laughs> We should have. But so on Monday, the chap came down, checked out the boat. We took him out for sale. We show him how it all worked, and he agreed to buy it. He gave us a thousand dollar deposit right there and then, and he put the rest of the money into our bank account the next day. So, and this was so that was Tuesday, I think. Tuesday we sold the boat, mm -hmm. and we were flying out on Friday. So like this was such. You know, dum 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 dum, everything lining up, yeah, wasn't it? A bit of serendipity there. The other thing is, when we bought the McGregor 26, the guy that we bought it from said to us, "You will have no trouble selling this boat. You know, these are fantastic boats." Blah blah blah. We didn't know that much about the McGregor 26 when we bought it, but interestingly, he was right. He was right. So absolutely, and and so. The, the story with this boat is we the price we bought it for we we did a couple of thousand dollars extra worth of work on it and the trailer to bring it up to what the standards that we liked um, we asked uh, to get all of our money back and we did so we got you know we used the boat for you know several months we got all of those those great trips out of it and yet we got all of our money back immediately so that was a really good outcome wasn't it it was, it was, and it was quite timely because we only were, you know, back in Australia for a short length of time. So let's talk about what we really thought about the McGregor 26. All right, so one of the things that we were told about the McGregor from this really nice um, honest salesperson too is that he felt the reason why he didn't like it, it was a bit tippy, he said. And I thought, ooh, what's tippy mean? But um, he was right. It's it's actually unless you've got the ballast in there. Um, well, even with the ballast, it's it, it's it's just a little bit. It's a, just a little bit tippy, isn't it? <laughs> I, I don't well, know. Well, it's it's I'm, okay. So it's a light boat. The ballast is in the hull of the boat, not down at the bottom of a keel. So mm -hmm. the the sideways momentum it only gets stabilisation as you lift the weight of the ballast up a little bit. So it does the first. 20 degrees of tilt with very little force so mm -hmm. the smallest gust of wind and pff, you lean over a bit or you mm -hmm. step down the hull and it leans over a bit so mm -hmm. in that regard it's very mobile it moves a lot mm -hmm. um, but once you get used to it and you you get to you be one with the boat um, you, you you know how to handle it then and then when the sails are up it's, it becomes more stable too when you've got the ballast in, the sails are up, and you're mm. you know, and you're sailing along. Yeah, um, these are probably the only criticisms we have of the McGregor 26. Oh, it doesn't have a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doesn't, it doesn't have a few things, but we'll get to that later. Um, but the sailing performance is it, it will get to four knots quite easily and five knots, mm. and we have done six and seven and a half knots in it. Um, square to the wind or slightly downwind so it does actually sail quite 
a lot better than what I expected after all the insults that we've been told about it before we got it. It, it isn't like a, a fixed keel boat where you've got a lot of ballast and it'll sail along stably and you don't need to manhandle the sails. What we found is when we're sailing along in gusty wind as you probably would have seen us sailing down the, the sandy strait, when there were gusts it tipped over quite a lot mm. so the way to handle that is just to ease off the main sheet mm -hmm. rather than correct um, mm. direction with the, the, the tiller. Yeah. So you know you can sail along and it's a one-handed job so it's not particularly hard but but it's fairly active sailing. Yeah, it's not a set and forget. Yeah, that's yeah. right. It's especially upwind is really where you, you need to be doing the, the, the uh, trimming. There's lots of good things about the boat. It was so easy to uh, drop into the water. You know, you can trailer it anywhere as so long as you could, you've got a decent four-wheel drive. Put it on the back of the trailer and you can take a very short time to get from A to B plop it in, do a splash and you're, you're sailing very quickly. Yeah. You don't have to take days and days to actually get to where you want to go. So that's the advantage of a sailor trailer. Mm. Uh, yeah, when you say it didn't take long to put in the water, 45 minutes I'd yeah. say. Once we've done it a few times and same taking it out, it does take about 45 minutes to, to, to put on the trailer. It did take us, the two of us, to actually to rig it and to de-rig it. We were told that you can uh, do it with one person, yeah, you can do it single-handed, and yeah, you can, but um, in our experience, it, yeah. it was just easier. If you're doing it single-handed, the problem we found was that as we pulled the mast up, the shrouds would catch on the, um, the solar panel at the back or around a winch handle or all that sort of thing. So if you had the second person going around and untangling the shrouds, then it was, um, it was a lot easier and the mast went straight up. So we would recommend two people do it, unless you're, if you are a lone sailor and you've got plenty of time, then okay. Mm -hmm. The other thing I liked about it is it was kind of like the TARDIS. It was a lot bigger inside than it looked from the outside. Absolutely, absolutely. The space on this boat is very, very good for a 26-foot trailer sailor, mm. seriously. Mm. It was lovely on board. I had full standing headroom in the main area. We had a big uh, double bed. Mm. There was a V-berth up front. We didn't. We just used that for storage, as you've seen. Um, but it had a lot of space. It had a porta potty and had pressurized water and, and, a, and really an area, to, an area to cook. We had a camping gas stove. Yeah. The only thing it really didn't have was a shower. It had, which... a, it had a cold shower at the back. Cold shower at the back, but which you, you know. didn't want to use because it was cold <laughs> and it was winter. So fair enough. <laughs> And, and didn't have hot water. You know, when you consider what people use it for, what would you, what would generally people use a 26 McGregor for? Well, yeah, I like mean, it's, holiday it's, sailing. It's, it's, it's weekend sailing or week sailing. Um, it's not cross the ocean stuff. I did have somebody ask me, uh, you know, if it would be the sort of boat that you take over to Papua New Guinea from Australia, and I don't think so. I think it's just a little bit, I don't think the rigging is I strong enough if, too if much of a yeah, yeah, too much of a risk. But it is absolutely fantastic for coastal sailing, weekend sailing, and, and, and holidays. People do live on it as well, just as a matter of interest. Well, um, we did live aboard for the, the time that we had it. Yeah, you know, so. yeah. But I mean, people use it as their home base. We had some people from Victoria that, because Victoria was in lockdown, they were living up in Queensland and they were looking for McGregor to to buy, to live on as their as their home permanently. So you can do it. It's a bit, I mean, it obviously depends what you used to and what you are happy with. And does also depend on the weather because obviously if, you know, if you're in somewhere that's warm and you don't have foul weather, you're outside most of the time. And of course, what we always really love about you know the ability to be able to beach a boat so this little McGregor you know we, we pulled it up on the beach and it sat down on the beach and even we were in the middle of a storm and we were on the beach at the time and even even that was fine. The, the daggerboard and the lifting rod has worked fantastically well very easy mm. one hand mm. it comes up and down absolutely marvelous and, and take it ashore we didn't have a proper dinghy because no, um, we knew we were going to be doing like right up to the beach kind of sailing yeah. and we didn't really need it. We, did, we, did, we had a paddle ski. We did. I think for what this boat is, it's a fantastic boat for coastal cruising, for trailer sailoring and also, you know, with a big engine on the back you do 12 to 15 knots. Mm -hmm. You know, when you want to get somewhere fast, oh. let the ballast out, mm -hmm. you lift up the daggerboard and the rudders and meow. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. you go, you yeah. get there, you know, real it's, fast. It's a great boat also for a first time sailor because it's not too difficult. You've got a smaller mainsail and you've got a little bit of a jib mm. and it's really easy to manage and, and learn on. Learning to sail on a, a boat with a light small boat is really good because then every time you change the sail you can feel what a difference it makes to the boat very directly mm -hmm. whereas on big boats a little bit of sail change and you really don't feel it because there's so much weight they so. do say that you can take six adults out and you can sleep six adults um, we did take six adults out obviously everybody had life jackets and that kind of thing but if, yeah, six six people on the boat would be too much it, yeah, I mean it wouldn't be comfortable really like each maybe. Other. <laughs> Maybe for a night or two, but it's kind um, of like camping, just on the water. Yeah. So, so long as you're prepared to rough it a little bit, because that's what camping is like. Well, it's it's much better than just camping. Absolutely, yeah, you can go so. to fantastic places and be by yourself. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I want to just point out is if you have the 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 boat on the trailer and you you can go to caravan parks and use it as a caravan. Oh yeah, we but did al that. But also, if if the caravan parks are full and you want to camp illegally or camp wild, nobody ever thinks that people are sleeping inside a boat. Well, we'd never camp illegally. No, no, we wouldn't, absolutely no, no. But, but if you if wanted, you wanted to. to. If you wanted to, <laughs> there was nowhere to camp because... If you happened to be in a car park because all the campsites were full mm. and you needed to stay there for a night or two before, until the weather improved... Yeah, at a you, pinch, no one would know you were there. <laughs> It was actually really funny because once we turned up into a campsite and everybody stood up and watched, what on earth are you doing here? <laughs> bringing, the, bringing the boat in and backing it up. And it, was, it was hilarious. It creates a lot of interest. There's it always does. someone buzzing around wanting to talk to you about the McGregor and what's it do and, you know, how cool yeah. it was and all yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. Once I got my head around how to do the rigging and what to do and where things go where, once we did it over and over a few times, we got really good at it and very efficient, didn't we? But it was lots of fun and it took us lots of great places. So in summary, what did you think about the McGregor 26? Yeah. Well, the McGregor 26 really is a fantastic boat for, for its purpose. Um, it's got lots of space inside. It's, um, it's easy to maneuver. It's easy to handle. It, it, because it's so popular, it is expensive relative to the other boats, but the amount of space inside this boat is so much more than the average trailer sailor. Mm -hmm. So you're getting a lot more space inside for a trailerable boat, and the living inside is very civilized. Mm -hmm. So we loved it anyway, and really enjoyed our time on Little Mini Dash. But onward and upward, we're on to the next chapter in the next weeks you'll find us back in the Bahamas. So we've got some pretty cool stuff to share with you back in the US and over across to the Bahamas. So. Yeah, and we've also got some really exciting people that we've met up with mm -hmm. who show young people how they can get out in the water in their mid-20s. Yes. Very exciting, so mm. wait and see those ones. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it from us for this episode, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. All the best, guys. Bye. Bye. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in Golden If you have liked this episode, hit the like button, subscribe for free and ding the dong so you don't miss your fix of the next exciting episode. Love and health from the Barefoot Doctors. Spring. My feelings about this boat is immense. Do you know, wait till the dog fight stops? <laughs> <laughs>